Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you very much for those who are new viewers for visiting my channel. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the words of children's literature. Okay, still about children's literature. Are you ready to listen? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, children's literature sounds like an enticing field of study because children's books have been largely beneath the notice of intellectual and cultural gurus. They are apparently blissfully free of the oaths, what we ought to think and say about them. More than that, to many readers, children's books are a matter of private delight, which means perhaps that they are real literature if literature consists of texts which engage, change, and provoke intense responses in readers. But if private delight seems a somewhat indefensible justification for a study, then we can reflect on the direct or indirect influence that children's books have and have had socially, culturally, and historically. They are overtly important educationally and commercially, which consequences across the culture, from language to politics, most adults, and almost certainly the vast majority of those in positions of power and influence read children's books as children. And it is inconceivable that the ideologies permitting those books had no influence on their development. The books have nonetheless been marginalized. Childhood is, after all, a state we grow away from, while children's books from writing to publications to interaction with children are the province of that culturally marginalized group, females. But this marginalization has had certain advantages because it has been culturally low profile. Children's literature has not become the property of any group or, or discipline. It does not belong to the department of literature or library school or the local parents organization. It is attractive and interesting to students, official or unofficial of literature, education, library studies, history, psychology, arts, popular culture, media, the caring provisions, and so on. It can be approached from any specialist viewpoint. Its nature, both as a group of texts, as a subject for study, has been to break down barriers between disciplines and between types of readers. And as a group of texts, children's literature is at once one of the loveliest and more, most original of the arts and the site of the greatest commercial exploitation. This means that just as children's books do not exist in a vacuum, they have real argumentative readers and feasible, practical and consequential uses. So the theory of children's literature constantly blends into the practice of bringing books and readers together. The slightly uncomfortable or very inspiring corollary of this is that we have to accept that children's books are complex and the study of them is infinitely varied. Many students around the world who have been enthused onto children's literature courses at all levels repeatedly find that things are more complicated than they had assumed. There cannot be many teachers of children's literature who have not been greeted with a querulous, but it's only a children's book. Children won't see that in it, or you are making it more difficult than it should be. But the complexities are not mere problematizing by academics eager to secure their meal tickets. The most apparently straightforward act of communication is amazing, amazingly intricate. And we are dealing here with fundamental questions of communication and understanding between adults and children or more exactly between individuals. If children's literature is more complex than it seems, even more complex, perhaps is the position it finds it, itself in between adult writers, readers, critics, and practitioners, and child readers. Child's 
children's literature is an obvious point at which theory encounter, encounters real life, where we are forced to ask, what can we say about a book? Why should we say it? How can we say it? And what effect will what we say have? We are also forced to confront our preconceptions. Many people will deny that they were influenced by their childhood reading. And yet these may be the same people who accept the childhood is an important place in our lives. And that children are vulnerable, susceptible, and must be protected from manipulation. Children's literature is important and yet it is not. Consequently, before setting off to explore the somewhat tangled jungle that is children's literature, we need to establish some basic concepts, ideas, and methods to work through fundamental arguments to look at which techniques of criticism, which discourses, and which strategies are appropriate to or even unique to our subject. It can be argued that we can and should harness the considerable theoretical and analytical approaches of every discipline from philosophy to psychotherapy, or that we should evolve a critical theory and practice tailored to the precise needs of children's literature. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that what can I tell you today? Uh, the source of uh, these materials is taken from uh, the book chapters, the expanding works of children's literature studies written by Peter Hahn in a book entitled Understanding Students' Literature, which is edited by Peter Hunt. Thank you very much for listening or watching this movie, uh, this video. Um, I hope you enjoy it and you get at least one point from this talk. Please let me know what point can you understand, uh, mostly understand from this talk in uh, comment session, comment session wrap. Uh, that's all for today. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a great day. See you again in the next related videos.